What's up guys, my name is DJ Swivel and we are back for another episode of Just The Tips and this is a really exciting week for me because I've got a brand new plugin for you guys. It's called Spread. This week is all about stereo imaging. It's a multi-band stereo imager and I'm gonna be showing you a few of the ways that I like to use it in my tracks and my mixes. Stay tuned. What's up guys, my name is DJ Swivel and we are back for another week of Just The Tips. And this is a really exciting episode for me because I have a new product to show you guys. Uh, my second plugin is finally out, it's called Spread. Uh, and so this Just The Tips is all about stereo imaging and how you make sure that all of your tracks and when you're building your mix or building your song, your production, um, that you're really taking advantage of, of uh, the left and right speaker and, and, and the stereo image to really give room for every instrument in the track. And so I'm gonna show you a few ways uh, that I like to use spread uh, in my own tracks. Uh, and hopefully you guys can make some use of it yourselves. And of course you can go get a free demo right now on djswivel.com. So uh, let's get straight into it. Um, the first thing uh, when you load up uh, spread to note is that uh, it's slightly different whether you load it on a mono track or a stereo track. Now, of course, this is DAW dependent. Uh, in Pro Tools, you have mono tracks and stereo tracks. Other DAWs treat everything like stereo. So just so you understand uh, what's going on in the DAW. When you load up spread on a mono track, I have it here and I will get rid of it. And let's load it up one more time. It will, uh, it will turn your mono track into a stereo track because of course we want to be able to make the signal wide. And you'll see everything is uh, set to zero. Uh, this center knob in the middle is essentially a global spread knob. And so this spreads all three of your bands. Uh, what I failed to mention when I started this is this is a multi-band spread tool. So it's really easy to use, but you also have a ton of flexibility over uh, which section of the signal you are um, creating more stereo width in. So this is uh, in mono mode. Um, you'll, you can just raise everything like this, but of course you can also offset uh, the individual bands the way that you want. So you might want some highs a little wider and the lows a little more narrow and that's cool. Um, and of course down here uh, with the crossovers, you can set uh, the low, mid and high uh, bands, right? So that's that. Uh, we have a couple other really cool features here that I think are very useful when you're dealing with stereo imaging. Um, we have a tilt function here um, that allows you to emphasize the left or right side of the signal. Um, but one thing about this is it does not change your panning whatsoever. All it's doing is raising or lowering the value um, or the, the volume rather of the left or right signal. So you can maintain the same stereo image and width while still balancing out a signal. Sometimes you might get a loop that is like heavily weighted to the left side, especially if you sample a lot of old stuff and you might want to balance that out. And I'll show you a little bit about that later. Um, and then uh, and then this side roll off feature, uh, this is using an MS filter. If you don't know what MS is, it's mid side. Um, and essentially it separates what's in the middle of your signal, which is shared by both your left and right speaker um, and what is only exists in the sides, meaning it only exists in the left or right. Um, and this allows you to filter out some of the low end side stuff uh, because a lot of times if you have a ton of stereo information in your lows, you'll create phasing issues and it'll, it'll just feel like your mix is all over the place. Um, and of course you have an audition button here that if you click that, you'll be able to hear exactly what you're filtering out so you can get to the right level. You don't want to take out too much. Uh, and then of course you turn it off when you're done. Uh, and this filter goes up to 200 Hertz. So, uh, and depending on how high you take this filter, that determines what the low end of this uh, low band equals. So if you're filtering out the, the spread up to 175, then essentially this band will go from 175 to, in this case, 523. Um, and if it's off, then of course you will be spreading all the way down to 20 hertz. So um, that is uh, spread in mono mode. And when you load it in stereo, you'll see there's something different. So when you load it in stereo, looks almost the same, except we have um, a zero balance line. Uh, and this is with no spread. You are seeing the bands, but this is no spread. And the reason it's this way is because 
when you're in stereo mode, you can actually use this tool uh, to make your tracks more mono. You can go backwards. So this will actually make your track, uh, the stereo image of your track, uh, more narrow. And sometimes you want to do that. Sometimes you get a sound where it's too wide and you want to like bring it back in. And so this allows you to do that. And of course, uh, you can do that with uh, as a multiband. So maybe you want the highs a little more spread, but you want the lows and the mids like very narrow. And that might be something you want to do. And so you have functionality over that. These three bands are offsets. Um, and of course the main knob will just move them all equally. And that's just kind of how it functions and everything else below functions the exact same. So that is the GUI, so you understand how to use it. It's a very simple tool to use. And now let me show you guys a few of the ways that I like to use spread. So let's close this. And uh, the first way that I wanna show is um, actually on this uh, lead vocal, but uh, background vocal also. So I have a, a chorus vocal here, a lead vocal that um, that I'm singing and, and uh, I didn't record any backgrounds. And so, but I want that chorus vocal to feel nice and big and wide. And so uh, I said, let me make a background vocal using spread. And so what I did is I simply copied the lead vocal down. And if you don't do anything else to that, that's gonna do nothing. It's just gonna raise your signal volume because you're hearing two of the identical signal. But what I did is I changed the, uh, some of the pitch stuff going on with it. I'm actually using the sauce to do that. Um, if you haven't tried the sauce yet, go check it out on djswivel.com. There's a free demo. Um, but so I'm, I'm messing with the lead vocal, uh, changing the pitch or, or whatever. Uh, and then I add spread after and it, and it creates a nice stereo image. And I have it just set to a hundred to show drastically what it can do. So let's first listen to the lead vocal, uh, by itself. Uh, so I'm going to take, uh, all my send effects off just so you can hear what it's doing. And then I'll play you the hook vocal or rather the um, background vocal uh, and show you what spread is doing. So here we go. I'll just play two lines of the hook. Quit fighting what you want from me, girl. Quit fighting. Cool. So now let's hear the hook vocal. So let me take spread off and just you'll hear what I did with the sauce. I'll actually take uh, the sauce off as well. So we have... Um, we have the lead vocal here. Quit fighting. And let's hear what it with the sauce. You want. Quit fighting. What you want for me, girl. Quit. Very cool. So now it has different characteristics. We're in multiband mode. We've pitched down the lows. Uh, we've got the mids, a little formant shifted and a little mix on that. Uh, and we've pitched up the highs. So I like that. Now let's hear what spread does to it. So I'll play it uh, by itself, and then I'll turn spread on about halfway through. Here we go. Quit fighting what you want for me, girl. Quit fighting what you tell me, scream There you go. So halfway through, you could hear spread came on. It got really nice and wide. Um, and I'm doing some uh, low side filtering as well, just to make sure that there's no like low end muddiness there. Uh, and yeah, you can see very simply, all I did was just raise this up to hundred, good to go. Um, so that's how I use spread on background vocals uh, or to create a background vocal. Um, and let's see what else uh, I'm using spread on in this session. So here is uh, one great way. So I have these, uh, these keys and I've got spread on them, but I'm, I'm not doing any stereo imaging. Again, these are stereo keys. So this is our zero point line, as you can see. Um, but what I am doing is I am just balancing out the left and right. So if I take spread off, you'll hear that the weight of this sound is a little bit to the left. And um, in some cases you might want that, but in this case, because the sound has some um, it's got some pan modulation. It's got some like a chorus. So it's kind of going back and forth. It's already got a ton of stereo. So I want it to feel evenly weighted. Uh, and so let's hear it without spread on it. And now with spread.
so we can get a little more drastic with it. For me, right around like 30, 32, that was like a nice, a nice uh, sound. And it just evened out uh, the, the balance of, of this sound. So that I found very useful uh, on this track. Let's see what else we're doing on spread. Oh, actually I'm using spread uh, as a send effect on my doubler track. So uh, if you've gotten my mix templates, uh, you'll know that I often have a doubler track, uh, a, a bus, and I will send lead vocals to it. So let's go and listen to this lead vocal again. Um, and the doubler is off. And then I will just show you uh, what it does when you use it as a send, just to create some nice stereo image on your lead vocal. So about halfway through, you'll see I'll unmute this and I'll raise uh, the level uh, that is being sent to spread. And just so we can see what the effect uh, on, uh, is happening. Um, I have the highs and the mids all the way to 100% and I have the lows at zero. I'm not doing any spreading on the lows. So you, we're just getting some high frequency and mid, mid range frequency spreading. Basically everything above 500 hertz. All right, so let's just put that there and let's listen. What you want from me, girl? Quit fighting. Heart you tired of screaming. You're fighting, fighting. This goes slow beyond your. So you can go drastic with that. I like it kind of subtle. So around this like minus 20 dB mark feels good. It just adds a little bit of width. But again, you can use that to double up your vocals and it sounds really, really clean and smooth. Uh, okay, and so finally, what is the last way that I'm using spread on this song? Let's hear it. Actually, on the master fader. So I have a typical mastering chain that I like. Um, I have a bus compressor here. I have some ozone going on uh, that is basically doing some multi-band uh, uh, sort of compression and, and some general EQing. And then finally, I end it with spread. And the purpose is to just give the overall mix some, uh, um, some added stereo width. Uh, and you'll notice that I've actually lowered, made the low frequency below 313 hertz, more mono, and I've spread everything above 313, just a little bit, 26% here and 38% uh, on the highs above, uh, you know, almost 4K there. Uh, and then I can also show off uh, what is going on with the side filter. So let's just hear the mix. And, uh, and we'll, we'll figure out what, what spread is doing here. Here we go. I'll turn spread off first. And there you have it. So using it on your master fader, you can get your sound nice and wide uh, and sort of polish up, just get, get the little final finishing touches on your mix. Uh, and, and this side roll off is really useful to pull out some of those weird lows that are happening on the sides. Um, and, and it's really just to correct your mix. Uh, if you have a great sounding mix and you've got your low and nice and polished, when you turn uh, this audition button on, you shouldn't hear much. So if you turn that audition button on and you don't hear anything, it's because your mix is in good shape. You don't have any low end, uh, you know, stereo problems there. Uh, so keep that in mind. Uh, you're not always going to hear something there, but if you do, it's really there to correct a problem. So, uh, so this is spread. Uh, it is available on djswivel.com now. Uh, go check it out if you have a chance. And uh, yeah, let me know how, how you're finding it in, in your own workflow, how you're using it. Uh, send me some videos on Instagram. I'll make sure I repost them. Uh, until next time, make sure you subscribe, uh, like and comment, and I'll see you in two weeks. Peace, guys. Quit fighting, what you want.